what if this life is really vanity? What if this life, all of our work and our homework and our loves and our friendships and our activities and everything that we spend so much time consumed with, what if it's all really pointless in the end? It's a question that comes to us from a listener named Blake. Hello, Pastor John. I was wondering if it's possible to be saved and also to be a nihilist. There is a big part of me that just feels like nothing in life really matters. Everything is just temporary anyways. The end result for everyone is death. But at the same time, I don't feel like Christ would want me to feel that way. I do, though, and I'm not sure what to think about it. Thank you for your help. That word comes from the Latin nihil, uh, that means nothing. So the idea is that everything amounts to nothing. Wikipedia, and I checked two or three um, dictionaries and and encyclopedias of of philosophy, and, and this is the simplest, says most commonly nihilism is presented in the form of existential nihilism, which argues that life is without objective meaning, purpose, or intrinsic value. Moral nihilists assert that morality does not inherently exist and that any established moral values are abstractly contrived, end of quote. Now, given both those definitions, it is obvious that they are contrary to what the Bible teaches and what Christianity has meant for for 2,000 years. God does give meaning and purpose and value to human existence. He himself is the ultimate value, and his purpose gives meaning to life. His holiness defines what is good and beautiful so that morality does inherently exist and moral values are not merely abstractly contrived. So nihilism is the opposite of what the Bible reveals to be true. And to embrace nihilism as true would necessarily mean rejecting what the Bible presents as truth about God and Christ and their purposes for the world. And that rejection would mean that a person would be choosing to reject God's offer of salvation. But I can't bring myself to believe that Blake was asking something so obvious. (laughs) I mean, he says, can you be a nihilist and be saved? I mean, the answer seems so obvious to me. I, I don't think he, I don't think he means that merely. Here's his own definition, what he's talking about. Quote, there's a big part of me that just feels like nothing in life really matters. Everything is just temporary anyways. The end result for everyone is death. So here's Blake's definition of nihilism. One, it feels like nothing matters. Two, everything is temporary. Three, because the end result is death for everybody. So let me respond objectively, biblically, just very briefly, to each one with a bullet and then turn around and get at what I think the issue is. Namely, he says, it feels like this. Um, Number one, it feels like nothing matters. Actually, Blake, everything matters because God created everything with a purpose. Proverbs 16, 4, the Lord made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. Number two, he says, everything is temporary. No, Blake, it's not. Paul says, The things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. That means you and me, you never met a temporary person. They all live forever. Life is infinitely significant. Number three, he says, the end result is for everyone death. Blake, no, it's not. Hebrews 9.27 says, it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment. Death is not the end for anyone. So my last response is, what about Blake's feeling? What he says is, there's a big part of me that just feels this way. And my response to this is, it is possible, Blake, to feel this way and be saved if you don't stay feeling this way. Feelings are fickle, 
and they can become deep, settled positions that destroy you. Satan may have shot a fiery arrow of doubt and disillusionment at you. It lodged in your mind and your heart. God allowed it in order to test you. So fight through the feeling. Confess it to God. Admit it. Hate it. Set yourself against it. Pray that God would deliver you from it. And then immerse yourself in the truth. Because there is another feeling in you. You said so. You said, I don't feel like Christ would want me to feel this way. Well, that's good. That's good. That's real competition in your heart. And it didn't come from the devil. No, he wouldn't. Christ wouldn't want you to feel this way. And he is not arbitrary in what he wants. He has his reasons and he wants to give them to you. So give yourself no rest until you find Christ's reasons for not being a nihilist. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. And uh, thank you for the open and honest question, Blake. Nothing is off limits on this podcast. And so we welcome questions all across the spectrum of issues in life that you face. And uh, you'll see this to be the case if you go to our online home and click on the popular tab to see our most listened to episodes of all time. The list can be found at desiringgod.org forward slash ask Pastor John. And there you can also send us a question of your own and you can browse our archive of now over 1,000 episodes in our podcast history. Amazing. Well, has God ever been surprised? Why or why not? And how does the Bible answer that question? We'll find out on Friday. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening to the Ask Pastor John podcast with longtime author and pastor John Piper. We'll see you then.